Hey robot makers, do you want to know how to build your own robot? Now I normally do these videos as a how-to video and this is more of a what happened kind of video. So let's get started. So form follows function. Lewis Sullivan came up with this idea a long time ago in architecture and it's very similar with robots as well. So if we think about how will it move? Are you going to make a walking robot, a wheeled robot, a flying drone? So how is it going to move around? Is it going to move around at all? How are you going to power it? So what kind of battery, what kind of power requirements do you think you'll need? Uh, what's your budget? That might be a really critical factor. It might be that you've got lots of odds and ends knocking about and you're just going to put together using what you have in your workshop. What kind of tools do you require? And that includes software tools. So design software, screwdrivers, 3D printers, all that kind of stuff. What kind of materials are you going to make it from? So I usually use 3D printing, 3D printing filament. I'll use screws, I'll use super glue, hot glue, whatever I have hanging around. What size should it be? Are you going to make a full size humanoid robot? That's quite an undertaking, particularly if you're going to 3D print the thing, that'll take a very long time. I prefer smaller robots because they're easier to build, easier to iterate through, uh, and they don't cost as much money either. What kind of capabilities and features do you want your robot to have? So does it have to have AI? So the kind of features and capabilities that you want will also define what kind of processing power you need. So if this is just a robot that will move around by a remote control, then you can very easily make this using something like an Arduino, a Pico, an ESP32. If you want something that can do AI, face recognition, voice synthesis, voice recognition, then you probably need something a bit more powerful. And this is a, an old axiom, so you can, fast, cheap and good. You can only pick two. So if you want something that's fast and cheap, it's probably not going to be very good. If you want something that's good and cheap, it's probably not going to be very fast. And if you want something that's good and fast, it's probably not going to be very cheap. When we say fast, that might be fast processing uh, or more capable in its uh, processing power. So I'm going to design Explorer. It's a new robot, a new design that I've thought of. And these are the, some of the capabilities that I'm thinking about. So I want it to do, be able to do object detection, visual processing, probably speech and speech synthesis and voice recognition, and also be able to detect its environment using a range finder. I am also going to include a LiDAR on top of that. I've already got a LiDAR in the workshop, and that's something I want to add to one of my projects. So what kind of processor does it need? Uh, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 because it's very small, it's a very powerful chip that has everything I need to run Python. So how am I going to power this? So I've got a couple of LiPo batteries in the robot lab, I'm probably going to use one of those. So this is going to be a four-wheel drive robot. It's going to be very similar in design to the Trilobot from P. Moroni, but this will be my own design. So what size? I want something that can sit in the palm of my hand. What kind of materials do I want to make this from? So 3D printing filament, probably metal screws. Now I'm a really big fan of the Smars robots, the screwless assemblable robot system. However, in this case, I want to be able to use screws and try that out because I've not done that before. What kind of tools do I require? So I'm going to be using a 3D printer, probably both of them at the same time. 3 3D software, Fusion 360, Cura to do the slicing of the 3D STL files, Python to make it bring to life in code, and Visual Studio to program it. And my budget is probably around £50, and I've got quite a few of the things already in the workshop, and I bought a few things like the Moon Buggy Wheels, but these are not very expensive. So the design process. So designing robots, um, you do tend to go through a similar kind of process every time. So ideation, you're going to sketch something down on paper. That usually takes a couple of minutes to do. It's usually the easiest thing to do because you've just thought of an idea. You've not really thought about how you're going to do that at this point, just what it will look like and probably how it will work. And then you might spend a couple of hours mocking this up in your design software, such as Fusion 360. You might bring in accurate parts into your design so that you can get really accurate fit and finish to the thing and see how everything will fit together. And you also need to consider things like how the wires and the holes for those wires will work in your design. It's one thing I always forget about, a bit of foreshadowing there. And then iteration, this is the most time consuming part. So you'll print out a test print first of all, you'll fit everything together, you'll discover that there'll be something that's not quite right that you need to rework. You'll check it for your fit and robustness, you'll update the design, and then you go back to that iteration again, print it out, see does it fit, is there something else that you need to change, the tolerance is quite right, and so on. And really this is where you can spend the majority of your time building a robot. And that's before we even got to coding it. So ideation is my favourite bit. This is the bit where you can sort of sketch something down. You can see my very crude picture there of what the Explorer will look like. So it's a four-wheel drive robot, probably about the size of my, my palm of my hand in total. It's going to be powered by a LiPo battery. It's going to use the P. Moroni Explorer hat which allows us to use the motor drivers and we can also bring in some other sensors as well. And because it's running on a Raspberry Pi, we can also use things like the camera as well. So it's going to be powered by a Raspberry Pi 2W and I love these moon buggy wheels that were on the trailer bot. So I'm going to buy some of those and use those too. And my favorite little motor that was also on the trailer bot is those N20 motors. They're really robust, very cheap and very easy to fit. 
So some tips to consider when you're building your robot. Three millimeters is a good solid height for a base plate. So if you're gonna build something and use that as a solid base to put all your different parts under and on top of, three millimeters seems to be a good in between, between it being too thick and too thin. Three millimeters seems to be quite rigid, quick to print as well. Think about the wires, where they'll go from and to. Again, a bit of foreshadowing. Think about uh, everything that will fasten together. So are you gonna use glue? You're gonna use screws, friction, pressure. And one of the disadvantages of using software such as Fusion 360 is it doesn't include gravity so sometimes you put all these things on there and you forget that they might just slide off or that they're not really robustly connected together so you need to think about how these things are going to connect together uh, so when it's finished how you know it's finished what what is good enough how will you know when to stop that's something that i will always struggle with and i always think i can still improve upon that but there's probably a, a point where um, it's diminishing returns i use calipers to measure absolutely everything on my robots all my different parts i like to know exactly what the real world measurements of these things are because sometimes it'll say you know the three millimeters and you measure it and they'll be a little bit under a little bit over and sometimes you need to consider that in your design especially giving it a bit of tolerance and i find about 0.1 of a millimeter is a good tolerance just in general and i'll usually mock up the design in fusion 360 or some other software before I go any further to make sure everything fits together and it kind of looks right as well does it have like a nice aesthetic to it so let's have a look at Fusion 360 uh, and the first iteration of this. So it's this one here, which are based on this Smiles robot. You can see the chassis is basically a Smiles chassis, but it's got four motors inside. Now, the problem with this is that the uh, the terminals on the motors are basically touching together. And there's no extra room there. Now, I could make this a bit wider, but when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, I've probably done Smiles to death. I probably want to look at a slightly different design now for this different robot. Now, this little clip is me building a Smiles chassis using Fusion 360. And you can see it's quite quick to build, uh, quite simple measurements. I think it's 58 by 70 millimetres. And then there's a couple of cutouts at the front and on the side. And then finally, there's some little extrusions uh, where the motors sit inside. You can also see there's some slots there for where the Arduino would sit uh, on a regular Smars. The little holes in the side are just where the motors go. So here's the finished model printed out and you can see there the terminals for the motors practically touching and that really won't work. So I'm over here in Fusion 360 and I'm going to very quickly take you through how I've designed the Explorer robot. So the first thing I've done is I've laid out a sketch of the base plate. So this is going to be where the motors are and this is where everything else attaches to. So the first thing I do is extrude it out by about three millimeters. That seems to be a really good size. I've then uh, just rounded out some of the, uh, the corners there just to make it a little bit more smoother. So the next thing I do is I bring in one of the motors to see if this is going to fit nicely against the base plate. Now I've just put a joint there just so it's fastened nicely into place and then I'm creating a new component and I'm bringing in the moon buggy wheels. First of all I'm just bringing in one motor and one moon buggy wheels and that's exactly in place and I've got a rigid joint there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mirror these first of all left to right and then back to front. So now I'm going to sketch out the Raspberry Pi where that's going to go. So you can see there the Raspberry Pi is going to sit kind of lengthways across the, the robot. So I've punched a couple of holes in the base plate there so that I can screw the Raspberry Pi Zero into the base. Now I've also designed this other component down here which is going to be used to hold the motors in place. So this is called a motor holder and I brought this in as a separate sketch. So the next thing I'm going to do is just do a nice rigid joint underneath the robot. So you can see that the, uh, the motor holder is holding the N20 motor in place very firmly. Now what's nice about these little motor holders is they take uh, an M3 nut and an M3 bolt and when we punch some holes through the base plate for those we'll be able to screw that into place and they'll be held in place very firmly. So you can see here, I'm just duplicating and then fixing in place the motor holder. So we've got four of them all in place. And then I've just simply punched through some holes so that we can screw those in place. So next, I'm going to mock up one of the standoffs. And this is going to be where we put the Raspberry Pi on top of the base plate with a bit of space underneath. And that space underneath is where I'm going to put the battery. The next couple of actions are basically just replicating that one standoff four times and then jointing them in place. I've then brought in a model of the Raspberry Pi Zero and then I'm going to join that in place as well. And there we go, we've got the Raspberry Pi Zero on top of the robot. So next I'm just going to quickly mock up a battery and put that in place. So the battery is basically just a big block. And this is quite accurate to the size of the LiPo battery that I have. I've then replicated those standoffs again and now we've got four of them in place 
zoom in a little bit on top. Let's turn off some of those sketches that we're not using anymore. Next, this is the Explore hat. I've not really modeled that out, but I have just put the basic dimensions of that in place. I then brought in a rangefinder. This is one I've built before for a previous project. And I've also brought in the Raspberry Pi camera module. Now I'm going to make a very similar kind of structure to what's on the trailer bot that holds both the rangefinder and the camera in place. So the next action, now I've just pulled through a couple of lugs through the chassis. I've actually not cut out any holes for them yet. So I'm going to do a very simple operation, which is just to combine them, use the uh, camera holder as a cutting tool into the chassis, but keeping the tool. And that means that we can have those lugs push through the chassis and make the holes for them. I've also cut out a couple of extra holes there next to the motors for the wires from the motors to go through up into the, through the chassis. So next up, I've basically just replicated that very same camera holder. Um, now this isn't going to work. I've later discovered it's not wide enough, but for now, this is kind of what I've gone with. So there's one that's front, one that's at the back. And then I've replicated those standoffs one more time so that we can build a new top base plate on top of that. And that'll go between these lugs here and this standoffs there. And then I do a bit of finessing, rounding some of the corners out. Again, I'm going to use that trick where I use the camera plate as a cutting tool into the top plate, uh, keeping the tool. And then you can see there, we've now got some holes there. And these other holes, these are for the standoffs. And then these other four holes are for the LiDAR. Now, when I've actually put the LiDAR in place, on the actual model it clashes with where the camera is so I've actually had to put it back to front I'll have to come back and just turn the design around for these mountain holes that'll be on a, a next iteration and this is what I mean about you have to keep iterating through your design I've made some more enhancements as well so put in a huge hole there actually makes the thing print quicker and it also means that you've got plenty of space for your wires to go through and the next couple of steps are there me just refining this camera thing and also having a few extra standoffs as well and the very large standoffs are for the lidar that sits on top so there's a side view you can kind of see a bit more of the detail there on those nice moon buggy wheels. So this is the robot kind of work in progress. You can see there this LiDAR module, it doesn't sit very well at the moment on top of here. So what I'm having to do is actually just turn that around, that motor's kind of in the wrong place. It does sit nicely on top uh, and that's kind of where it's gonna live. Not obstructed by anything else, so uh, that'll do for now. So a couple of other things I'm not quite happy with. You can see this range finder, at the moment it's just flopping about because there isn't the other plate behind it to push it in place because uh, I've not allowed enough tolerance for that camera module. I also need to screw this camera module into the back of the base plate somehow and I've not got any screws for that yet. We can see there the stack of modules. We've got the Raspberry Pi Zero, the Explorer hat, and then just the top hat. And you can see that the camera in front and see the uh, rangefinder and also the N20 motors underneath and the uh, connectors. And they're nicely screwed in. They're very rigid. You can also see all the wires. Uh, everything's not optimized from a wire point of view as well. But the model works very well. Um, I'm very happy with the design so far. And you can also see it's very similar to the trailer bot as well. So the next steps for this will be to finish the design, keep iterating through until I'm happy with the design and once I've done that I can then start working on the code. Now I can use the Explorer hat code from uh, P. Moroni uh, and we can use that to make the motors go backwards and forwards. We can take readings from the range find. We can also use the uh, Raspberry Pi camera library to bring in images and things like OpenCV to do some image processing of that as well. I'm also intending to make this a uh, remote control using the Xbox control. P. Moroni also have that code available on their Trilobot source code repository. So I'm going to use that same code for my robot too. So one of the other enhancements I might make is adding some of the breakout guys garden uh, headers on the robot a bit like the trailer bot that means we can bring in extra modules very easily just by pushing them into the uh, breakout garden header so i hope you enjoyed this video i will be doing more on this robot in the future and then until then i shall see you next time bye for now